Hello and welcome to all of you viewing today's uh, Sandra Rosenbaum School of Social Work graduation celebration. My name is Kristen Slack and I'm serving as the interim director of the school. I have the great honor of giving this welcome speech, uh, but before we get started, a couple of details. For students, if you tag the school on Instagram, we will share your graduation posts today and throughout the week. Our Instagram handle is at UW Madison Social Work, all one word. Also, this video will be available for viewing with closed captioning following the live event. So save the link. Next, we want to begin with our school's land acknowledgement. The University of Wisconsin-Madison and the Sandra Rosenbaum School of Social Work occupy ancestral Ho-Chunk land, a place the Ho-Chunk Nation has called De Jope since time immemorial. In an 1832 treaty, the Ho-Chunk were forced to cede this territory. Decades of ethnic cleansing followed when both the federal and state government repeatedly but unsuccessfully sought to forcibly remove the Ho-Chunk from Wisconsin. This history of colonization informs our shared future of collaboration and innovation. Today, UW-Madison respects the inherent sovereignty of the Ho-Chunk Nation, along with the 11 other First Nations of Wisconsin. Like our graduates, uh, with this celebration, my time here, at least in this role as school director, is coming to an end. So today is as bittersweet for me as it is for many of you. While we did not think that we would once again, as last year, be holding our graduation celebration virtually, one silver lining is that many family members and friends who may not have been able to travel to attend an in-person celebration have the chance to be here today. Welcome to all of you. Our school <clears throat> offers undergraduate and PhD degrees in social welfare. Our professional degree programs include our Bachelor of Social Work, or BSW, and our Graduate Master of Social Work, or MSW, programs. Before turning to our lineup of speakers, I would like to start by saying a few words about our social welfare degree programs and the social work profession. I realize that many of you attending today may not have a full understanding of what the social welfare degree or the social work profession are all about. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to use the term social work here, here and out to capture all of our degree programs, since our social welfare degree programs involve much of the same content and learning, with the exception of field education, a core component of our professional degree programs. It is my experience after over 30 years in this field that most of the general public and even colleagues from other disciplines and professions that regularly interface with social workers don't have a good sense of what social work is. Part of the reason for this lack of understanding is that social work is an incredibly multifaceted profession. Our professional view of the world is that every individual, every family, every group of people exists in a larger context comprised of a wide array of communities, tribes, organizations, systems, cultures, and society at large, all of which have historical legacies that carry forward great strengths, but that can also carry forward traumatic pasts. Our professional goals include a heavy emphasis on pursuing and achieving social justice. And this means recognizing and confronting inequitable practices and policies, which too often have their roots in racism, classism, and other forms of oppression and discrimination. Social work as a profession has been working to confront these roots. And our students, along with our faculty and staff, and many national and regional social work organizations and peer schools of social work have all been influential in this effort. Social workers need to learn not only to identify how all of these different layers of the environment and historical factors affect and impact people, but how to navigate them and how to advocate for changes within and across them. We tell our students to start where the client is, uh, but this means assessing and understanding the complexities of each person's histories and lived contexts and how our own positionality, beliefs, and biases may affect those we work with. 
This all requires extensive knowledge and tremendous skill, but also humility, self-reflection, and a good degree of fearlessness. This past year has been so challenging for everyone at the school, but uniquely challenging for our students. On top of that, extreme political and social unrest fueled by a traumatic and seemingly endless string of racial and social injustices, in addition to the pandemic, have taken a deeply emotional and physical toll on us, but especially on our students of color, staff and faculty of color as well. Those of you here supporting a loved one who is graduating, I know you have seen firsthand and are, or are aware of the hard work your graduate has put in during one of the most extraordinary periods of time in recent history. But I wanna just say that our students graduating this year are themselves nothing short of extraordinary. What they have accomplished this year in particular is extraordinary. We are incredibly proud of them. And as they continue or move into the next phase of their professional lives, you can be assured that the people and the communities they serve are in very good hands. I'm gonna make a transition here to wearing a different hat. Um, and just, we're gonna need a few seconds to transition to a, a PowerPoint slide presentation. So not only am I the director of the school, but I also serve as the chair of our PhD program. And we have three students graduating from our PhD program this year. Our PhD program in social welfare, I can say with great pride, is one of the best in the country. It is an extremely rigorous program that emphasizes social welfare policies and programs and social science research methods with an emphasis on social justice. In the slides you are seeing, you, you see the names and faces of our graduates along with their dissertation titles. Marissa Abbott, Julie Yishakai, and Luke Muntner have spent the last four to five years in their lives of their lives in intensive coursework. Um, and Rachel Reinders and Yuna Kim, who are in our joint MSW and PhD programs, are graduating this year with their MSW degrees. After intensive coursework, um, there's an uh, equally intensive preliminary exam that our PhD students uh, complete, and finally a dissertation. Our PhD graduates land in a variety of careers, many in academia, becoming professors themselves, Many also move to research scientist positions at research think tanks and firms, and many move into policy analyst and executive level positions in the government, um, including federal appointments by, by presidential administrations. I've had the pleasure of working directly uh, with all three of our graduating PhD students and have had classes with or worked directly or indirectly with our graduating MSW students in our joint program. And I can tell you that their accomplishments are extensive and the contributions they stand to make as they move on in their careers will be amazing. I want to be the first to publicly recognize Dr. Abbott, Dr. Kai, and Dr. Muntner. You have not only achieved great success in your own research, but you have contributed to our PhD program through teaching, service on various committees, and through advocating along with your peers for changes to the program that have ultimately made the program even stronger. Congratulations to all of you and also uh, to Yuna and Rachel. At this point, we will move to our next speaker. Give us again a few seconds to transition between speakers. I'd like to welcome Professor Tracy Schrepfer, who will be saying a few words in honor of our social welfare graduates. I have to start again because I was on mute. <laughs> Okay, there's always going to be one person, so I'm it for today. Let me start again. Good morning, social welfare graduates, family members, and friends. I sat at my computer yesterday thinking about what to say this morning and knew that I did not want to share empty words and platitudes. You have each worked so incredibly hard for the past years and played hard, and I feel you deserve better than that. 
When I began my undergraduate studies, I was 23 years old and a single mom. I attended classes part-time and took nine years to earn my undergraduate degree while facing many challenges along the way. Not having experienced the more typical undergraduate journey that begins at 18, usually with leaving home for the first time, living in a dorm, playing hard, and enjoying newfound freedom, I assumed that my journey was atypical. I bought into the idea that my future students would be experiencing this typical, idyllic journey without any of the challenges I faced. I could not have been more wrong. Now, having taught undergraduate students throughout my 18 years at UW-Madison, I have learned that the idea of this typical, idyllic journey is a fallacy, and each of your journeys have been as unique and challenging as mine was. I have witnessed the numerous challenges you have faced in seeking your degree. Balancing multiple jobs, classes, and homework due to financial challenges, experiencing racism, sexism, ageism, and many other isms from classmates, employers, friends, and even at time, family members. Feeling less prepared academically than your classmates. Believing that as the first person in your family to attend college, you don't fit in the academic world experiencing the deaths of family members and friends, struggling with your own mental and or physical challenges, and so much more. I have witnessed how hard you have worked to overcome these challenges, and in doing so, seen tears shed, emotions such as anger, sorrow, frustration, and hurt experiences, days when it was a struggle for you to get out of bed and face the day, particularly as this pandemic dragged on and life as you had known it disappeared. That said, I have also watched the moments when your faces would light up with the joy of recognizing improvements in your academic work, being promoted at a job, being chosen for a leadership position, receiving a fellowship or scholarship, becoming an aunt or uncle, and even a parent, and so much more. As we gather here today to celebrate your graduation, I hope that you will take time to congratulate yourself on facing and overcoming the challenges you experienced and the moments of joy for all that you accomplished during your undergraduate years. You not only earned your degree, you also grew in ways that you may not yet realize. You worked hard personally, personally and academically. And I am so very, very proud of you and very happy for you. Congratulations. All right, so next, I'd like to welcome Clinical Associate Professor and Director of Field Education, Audrey Kahn, to say a few words about our field education program. Thank you, Tracy. BSW and MSW students participate in an academic year-long concurrent integrative seminar course taught by field instructors excuse me, taught by field instructors who are specifically devoted to field education. Our faculty-based integrated field seminars provide a conceptual base for practice as well as supportive environments to learn, critique, and consult. The focus is on learning and applying analytical and intervention skills within an ethically-based, problem-focused approach. A very special thank you to our community partners who work directly with students in agency settings, providing supervision and opportunities to pr practice social work. As Professor Schrepfer and Professor Slack said, this continues to be an extremely trying time and we recognize and respect the extraordinary work that you have accomplished to meet these ongoing challenges. We have a long road ahead and each and every one of you play a critical role and are needed now more than ever. Hold tight to the lessons you've learned and the strength of your relationships. I hope you will stay connected to the school through our many continuing education opportunities, our alumni events, and in two years when I come calling or one of the field instructors comes calling to become an agency supervisor. Congratulations, graduates, and I wish you all the best. Now we turn to our field instructors and featured student speakers. I'd like to introduce Laura Dresser, instructor for the Policy and Administration Field Unit. Good morning. Thank you, Audrey. Um, happy Mother's Day, everyone. And most of all, congratulations, graduates. Students in the Policy and Administration Unit are placed working at the system 
organizational and social level. Their work focuses on social justice, policy formulation, policy and program analysis, and social change. Some examples, students this year did research and evaluation on child support policies and parenting skills for people in incarceration with UW professors. Students worked at community agencies like Chrysalis, the Progress Center for Black Women, and the Dane County Time Bank. They supported policy development at the Center for Patient Partnerships and in the Wisconsin State Senate. As has been frequently mentioned, this year is challenging in many ways. I'm so impressed by these students, their commitment to the people they work with and to social justice. I'm excited to see what they will do in the world. Their hearts and hands and minds are ready and the world needs all of that. Best wishes to the policy and administration MSW graduates of 2021. And um, our first student speaker is from the, the policy and administration field unit, Sammy Smith. Hi, Sammy, you're muted, I think. Oh, okay. Try saying something now. We still can't hear you. Why don't we, while we're trying to figure that out, if we could ask um, Tim Latimer to come on and say a few words about the health field unit. Thank you. Students in the healthcare field unit gain experience working in settings with a wide range of patient populations and specialty areas. Students completed their field work with children and adults in hospitals, public health clinics, home care settings, and supportive care agencies. Hospitals and healthcare facilities were specifically impacted by the pandemic. The stress on the healthcare system was intense and continuous. All of these students faced obstacles to completing their field work. Many of the students worked directly with patients and families coping with COVID-19. Masks, shields, and adaptation were constants. These students completed culturally aware and compassionate field work in a particularly diverse set of placement settings this year. Thanks go out to all of the preceptors and the supervisors for Divine Savior Aspirus Hospital, SSM St. Mary's Hospital, Unity Meritor Hospital, VTAS Hospice, Mercy Hospital Janesville, Gildas Club, the Creative Learning Center, the UW Veterinary Hospital, Respecting Choices, and the Wood County Jail. Students in this healthcare field unit will go on to a variety of careers, including work in emergency rooms, dialysis, hospice settings, and in all ways, the public health. Congratulations to the healthcare field unit students. Now, uh, if we stay right on, please welcome Angela Willits, instructor for the mental health field unit. So we are um, having some technical difficulties with uh, Sammy's microphone that we're trying to work out. And I think we're going to move to our next, um, oh, Angela Willits is here. So Angela, I'm going to uh, ask that you come on um, and speak before Bobby does. 
Okay, thank you, Christy. Good morning. It's my pleasure and privilege to tell you a bit about my mental health field seminar. This group of 13 students completed field placements in a variety of mental health settings, ranging from community mental health centers to private practice clinics, from the county jail to university mental health services, from addictions treatment to even a horse farm for equine therapy. In our weekly field seminar, despite only meeting via Zoom, we supported one another in working through complex cases, imposter syndrome, it's real, feeling and doesn't go away, feeling overwhelmed, and the ever-present Zoom fatigue. In our time together on Wednesday mornings, we shared many laughs, challenging conversations, a love of music, dancing, and oh, so many cats made an appearance as well. Some of these graduates will remain here in Madison, while others are moving as far as Denver, Oregon, uh, or Oregon, and Virginia. Wherever you end up, graduates, I know you will do incredible work for vulnerable and underserved people. Congratulations to this inspiring group of social workers. Uh, next, please welcome one of these inspiring students from, uh, from my mental health field seminar, uh, one of our student speakers, Bobby Walker. All right, just confirming you can hear me. Okay. Last fall, when I was still quite new in my field placement at a mental health private practice in Dane County, I had an experience that shifted so much of how I thought of my role as a social worker. For the sake of brevity and client privacy, I'll spare you the details. What you need to know is that a terribly perfect storm had brewed, and I found myself in a position where I had to disclose to the police the location of an underage client of mine who was on the run with a youth version of a warrant out for her arrest. For context, if you've ever met me, you know of my refusal to engage with the police and my opposition to punitive and carceral systems, including CPS. Over the past two years, whenever professors or supervisors would try to encourage me to have an open mind to working with the police, I would retort with a dozen ways to creatively exclude the involvement of cops in my social work practice. Given this, you can imagine that having to make this decision about calling the police on my client caused me a great deal of stress. Every bone in my body was telling me not to give up my client's location, which he had told me in confidence. So I made my supervisor, bless her heart, run through all of our options, discussing the pros and cons, the benefits and potential risks, and liability, which, as much as we hate to admit it, guides so much of our practice. At the end of all that, I still had to share my client's location, breaking the trust I'd built with her and putting her in dangerous contact with the police. It was Thanksgiving break and I spent the entire four day weekend checking the news to see if my client had been hurt or killed. And I anxiously refreshed my email to see if her other social worker had had any updates on her. I hardly slept that weekend too because the situation had caused me to question my politics and my practice. I had always been unwavering in my belief that we can do good social work practice without involving carceral systems. I had a personal code to never call the police for any reason especially not to effectively snitch on a client. In my mind, I'd betrayed my client and I had betrayed myself. I had failed. And worse, I'd begun to see this failure as a sign that maybe those professors and supervisors had been right all along, that maybe I should just accept police involvement as a necessary part of this work that I signed up to do. Luckily, the remainder of my time providing therapy to teens, the same client included, made me see that experience in new ways. You see, in my work doing psychotherapy with adolescent clients, many of whom have experienced unspeakable and chronic trauma, we measure their progress, their healing, if you will, by if and how they can pause between experiencing some sort of external stimuli and their reaction to that stimuli. A three second pause between hearing fighting words and deciding to beat someone's ass is all I can ask my clients for. People exposed to chronic trauma and stress can sometimes function on autopilot, can get stuck in those flight, fight, freeze, and fawn responses. So healing becomes, in part, about examining one's automatic reactions. 
It becomes about intentionally and mindfully responding rather than unwittingly reacting. I ask them to pause and check in with themselves, their bodies, their needs, and to ask, how do I wanna show up in this moment? In our work together, we also begin to identify areas of control, no matter how limited, and we work to embody our sense of autonomy and agency while delicately accepting a certain amount of powerlessness and uncertainty. Similarly, the structures of white supremacy and capitalism are traumas we all endure, of course, some more acutely than others. And much of how we have learned to survive under these structures is based in unconscious reactivity and alienation. We are all indoctrinated into the traumas of white supremacy and capitalism. We've all, in some way, internalized its core ethos, which obscures our reliance on each other, which robs us of our humanity, which throws us into competition with one another, creating a world where we look out only for ourselves, where we seek to dominate, where we unthinkingly produce and reproduce cycles of harm. Our healing, our work then, in pushing back against this indoctrination is in that brief three second pause we take before we pick up the phone and call the police on a client. It's pausing to ask, how am I gonna show up in this moment? Do I really have to do this? Who says? It's about planting seeds of doubt into, into the systems we are supposedly locked into, challenging protocol and the, the status quo. It's about taking risks and not cowering in the liability, cowering in the face of the liability bogeyman. It's about pushing back on peers, professors, and colleagues who say, this is just the way it is. Even if in the end, I had no choice but to make that phone call, no choice but to accept my own limited power, I know my work was in the trying, the pausing, the questioning, the making my supervisor go through Reamer's ethical decision-making model, the being a pain in the proverbial behind, and in my treating the decision to call the police on a client as a matter in life and death, which it is always for black and brown and mentally ill clients. Sometimes the just and beautiful world that we all deserve seems too idealistic and unattainable. And this throws us e into even more despair because getting out of these ugly systems and building a better world seems insurmountable and impossible. But I believe that how we get there is less about carefully crafted statements of solidarity or well-intentioned platitudes and more so about daring to dream daring to be unwilling and disobedient in the face of large and looming systems of violence, or even just your agency protocol. The just and beautiful future we can create, one without prisons and policing, is simply the sum of many three-second pauses over and over again as we consciously choose how we want to show up in this moment. I will now turn things over to Amanda Zolke, instructor for the County Human Services Field Unit. Thank you, Bobby. The mental, mental health field is lucky to have you. Today, I have the pleasure of telling you all a little bit more about my field unit, social work practice in county human service agencies. My field unit was a fantastic group of BSW students who are being recognized here today. Students in the county human services field unit gain experience working in social service agencies and nonprofit organization. Um, these agencies missions are to empower individuals, families and communities. They do this through engagement, assessment, intervention and evaluation. This year, students in my field unit completed their field placements with community centers, food pantries, domestic violence services, crisis response programs, and housing and employment agencies. Needless to say, the scope of the work for hu county human service organizations during the pandemic has been tremendous, and the impact these students had at their agencies was impressive. It's been an amazing year, and I cannot wait to learn about the contributions that this very special group will continue to make to the field of social work. Best wishes to all the BSW graduates um, from my County Human Services field unit. And next, uh, please welcome Joshua Lappin and Stephanie Prim, instructors for the Intellectual and Other Disabilities field unit. Hello, and congratulations to the 11 students in the Intellectual and Other Disability Field Unit who completed uh, a full year of field placement this year. 
uh, we had a mixture of undergraduate and first year master's level students. Students in our field unit gain a better understanding of disability issues throughout the lifespan and how these issues impact other areas of social work. Our five graduating undergraduate students illustrate the breadth of placements in our field unit. Students have been placed at a variety of community agencies ranging from working with children and families, adults with disabilities, engaging in policy, advocacy, behavioral health, and a placement providing support and education to reduce sexual and domestic violence against people with disabilities. The culmination of all their work was that each student presenting and showcasing their work. Josh is having some audio issues. Oh, can you hear me? Still can't hear Josh. All right, why don't you go ahead? I'll go on. So the culmination of all the hard work of our students was presenting and showcasing their wonderfully creative change agent projects to supervisors, community members, and faculty via Zoom. Students from this field unit go on to jobs in a variety of human service and community agencies dedicated to those with disabilities, such as the Wiesman Center, Love Inc., and the Dane County Department of Human Services. Over the course of the year, we have continually been inspired by the students for obvious reasons. We offer our heartfelt congratulations to all of you. We believe you all have a bright future ahead of you. And at this point, we will turn to Lynette Studer, instructor for one of our mental health field units. Good morning. It's my distinct honor to introduce you to the students from our second advanced generalist mental health field unit at the school. Similar to Professor Willett's field unit, students in this seminar have successfully completed internships focusing on clinical and therapeutic work in a variety of field experiences, ranging from community-based work and going into people's homes to outpatient clinics providing mental health psychotherapy to hospitals and forensic settings like Mendota Mental Health. Students have the opportunity to gain both practical experience in mental health assessment, treatment planning, and group and individual interventions, and have worked with a range of kiddos as young as four in their families to adults and individuals well into their senior years. Um, clients they've served have struggled with uh, various mental health uh, symptoms such as anxiety, depression, dementia, and suicidality. As you also heard from um, our student speaker, Bobby, part of their growth this year has also been in understanding how they are going to move forward in their own practice um, as clinicians. As many of you know, given that you provided much of the support to the students needed throughout this past years as parents and families and loved ones, each of them bravely entered this year dealing um, not only with the typical anticipation and anxiety, but also a full ambiguity of what this year would look like. While several of them were physically at their placements during the year of the global pandemic, navigating new skills in full PPE, others never even set foot in their agencies, but instead obtained all of their hours virtually from their own homes. They did this all without complaint and went full steam ahead, committed to obtaining their MSW. I was continuously impressed by how the students not only worked on fine tuning their clinical skills, but also identified how to push and make both incremental and transformational systems level changes to improve our mental health infrastructure that doesn't work for everyone. And they included some amazing change agent projects. I'm so proud of them. This group of mental health social workers provide me with the optimism for the future of our profession, and I'm happy to welcome them into the practice. We have never needed you more. It was my sincere pleasure to walk and learn from each and every one of you on part of this professional journey. I look forward to our seminar time. I looked forward to our seminar time every Wednesday and will miss that. And remember when someone cancels your celebration, just move forward and plan your own party. Congrats to the mental health seminar. Um, I'm going to now, uh, I have the pleasure of introducing you to one of the most amazing um, and inspirational students of our seminar, Mashan Rivers Adams. Hi, can you guys hear me? 
You all hear me? Okay, great. Um, so hi everybody, my name is Michonne. Um, he, him, his, or his majesty, whatever you'll have. Um, I'm so, so proud of all of you. Uh, look at what you've accomplished. Um, you should all be very proud. Um, as a mental health professional, as of uh, about 12 hours ago, um, I want to avoid telling you how to feel, but as the great Dr. Dooley would have me do, um, I would recommend that you all be very proud of yourself. You definitely earned it. Um, for those of you who are utilizing my time slide for intermission, restrooms are down, the hall, down your hall to the right, and refreshments are in the next place or into the fridge or wherever you crashed last night. Um, so graduates, are, um, you are here today because you have shown not only academic excellence, but um, resilience in the face of the pandemic. Um, you, you have outdone yourselves and you have devoted your lives to serving others and have decided to take a stand against injustices everywhere. I am so grateful for this opportunity and even more grateful that I get to share it with all of you. Today you will get uh, a, be a behind the scenes look at working with children and learn how to do a little bit of magic. Uh, we will recognize some areas that deserve a social worker's attention and review a list of tools for the trade as you begin your practice as master's level social workers. For those of you do who don't know, again, my name is Michonne Adams and my friends call me Meech. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his grace, and um, or his majesty. Um, as all of you know that I am a master of social work now um, from the program of mental health and uh, um, have a leadership certificate in education of neuro neurodevelopmental related disabilities from the Wiseman Center. Um, as you go out and, and challenge the world, I have one request. Um, be the person you needed when you were younger. This is a quote I wanted to share with you because it is a quote that reminds me of who I want to be each and every day. If you are struggling with courage or confidence in the days, weeks, and months to come, I encourage you to find your younger self and why you began this journey in the first place. What is your passion? Dis rediscover the curiosity that was there, the playfulness uh, that we see in children who are, are not yet doubting or feeling the weight of decisions. The same confidence I see every day in the kids I work with. Walk in their shoes for a while. Discover how amazing it is to uh, be a little boy who walks around with his shirt off in cowboy boots and jeans, carrying a bow and arrow and tennis racket, making no sense at all. Uh, maybe resort to throwing a holistic tantrum in public and get rewarded for it so people stop staring. Uh, maybe choose when you can and cannot read. Uh, come up with ideas that are so out of this world that they almost make sense. Demand naps in the middle of the day. Say complete nonsense and walk away like you just solved world hunger. Draw ridiculous pictures and have adults rave about your artistic genius. Use maladaptive behaviors to convince your crush you don't like them. Stick your fingers in your nose and carry on whole conversations as if it was socially acceptable. Write huge and small letters in the same word and with, with no regard for the lines on the page. Believe that the opportunities are endless and that the world is full of magic. One of my favorite things I encounter from my kiddos is that they look, they look up to me like I can do magic. Of course, now that I have been with them for many years now, um, they definitely know for certain that I can do magic. Um, with, each, with each day, be the person you needed when you were younger. Today, our MSW journey ends, but the relationships, the support, and the passions that brought us together today does not. These, these will remain our legacies. So we are, not, we are not here to celebrate the end of this academic journey, but the start of the journeys to come. Here's a list of the things that we can do and yourself, uh, do for yourself and others as a MSW graduate. First of all, uh, drink water. We all know you had a great time last night. Your body needs water. Uh, never stop having fun. Life is supposed to be fun and enjoy it. Uh, number three, empower yourselves and others. You may need it um, yourself some days. Uh, for, uh, number four, afford, your, afford yourself the same generosities that you afford others and don't give more than you have. Number five, 
remember that people can present well, but maybe internalizing things you can't imagine. So be kind. Number six, challenge yourself to be a great provider, both for those you serve and yourself. Number seven, love unconditionally. Number eight, be the leader you needed during this pandemic. That's all I have to say about that. Number nine, be bold and creative and a part of something the world has never seen before. Number 10, make those around you proud and make yourself proud. Number 11, forgive yourself and try to remain humble. Uh, number 12, passionately fight for those who cannot, even if you feel nothing is reciprocated. Number 13, support those who lose hope, even if that person is you. And number 14, be proud of your achievement. You earned it. Um, as we go out, um, I just want you to remember to um, be kind, do a little bit of magic, and be the person you needed when you were younger. Even if that younger, that person, that younger person is last semester in graduate school, then be Lynette, Gail, Josh, or Stephanie. Finally, remember, remember that it is our responsibility to relay to our communities these messages. First, um, Black Lives Matter significantly. Um, second, to stop hate. Third, love and be who you, are, who you want, LGBTQ+. Um, fourth, nothing about us without us, disability rights. Um, autism acceptance over awareness. Increase awareness for missing and murdered indigenous women. Do your part to help create a sustainable environment. Don't hurt anyone, and if you do, try to apologize or make amends. And practice self-care. Congratulations, class of 2021. Um, please stay in touch. Um, next, please welcome Tracy Schopfer uh, on behalf of Jacob Dumb, instructor for the Older Adults Field Unit. Michonne, thank you so much. Those are great words of wisdom for us all to live by. So, hi all. Jake Dunn is the field instructor for the social work practice with Older Adults Field Unit, but he was unable to be here today. So, due to my well-known passion for the field of aging and the fact that almost every student in this field unit has taken one to three of my courses, Jake asked if I would step in for him, and I am so honored to do so. The Older Adults Field Unit provides an opportunity for guided practical experience in social work settings so that students may acquire the knowledge, values, and skills essential for professional social work practice with older adults. Students perform their field work in a wide variety of agencies serving older adults in Dane County and the surrounding area. This past year posed many challenges for everyone, especially for our most vulnerable populations, older adults included. As a result, the students from this year's graduating class were placed in a variety of settings. Jake and I commend them on their work. They all did an extraordinary job with the constraints of working during the pandemic and meeting the needs of older adults, their families, and caregivers. Students from this year's cohort completed placements at Newbridge, Oak Park Play Skilled Nursing Facility, Fitchburg Senior Center, Dane County Human Services Adult Guardianship Program, the Alzheimer's Association, the Alzheimer's and Dementia Alliance, Middleton Senior Center, SSM Help at Home, and the Mong Institute. At a time when 10,000 baby boomers turn 65 every day and will do so until 2030, the need for social workers trained to work with older adults and their families has never been more critical. I want to thank, thank these students, Hallie, Gretchen, Eric, Song, Molly, Siri, Maggie, Rose, Erin, and Ada for their dedication to the field of aging. Jake and I are so proud of y'all and all that you've accomplished. And we know in our hearts that you will make significant contributions to the well-being of older adults and their families in the years to come. Congratulations. So with that said, up next we have Ron Chance, the instructor for our Community Agencies Field Unit. Hello, I just want to check uh, if uh, you can hear me. Um, so good morning, my name is Ron Chance. I'm the uh, field faculty associate for the community social work practice uh, unit 
In this unit, uh, students uh, gain experience with children, youth, adults, and families, along with neighborhood and community groups. The stud students graduating today have met the standards necessary to be considered professional social workers, demonstrating competence through their academic achievements and practice internships. Their internships place them in nonprofit and government settings, many virtual due to the pandemic, where they dealt with a range of issues, including immigration, food security, community social work, domestic violence, and public policy. During their time in the social work program, they've learned how to respond to a variety of situations, often involving our most vulnerable citizens and residents. It was my honor during the pandemic to engage them virtually at their sites, seeing them wearing masks and putting themselves at risk before the vaccination was available to um, help people. Four of our six graduates will continue on to get their master's in social work degrees. Two are entering the workforce, one focused on social policy issues, the other assuming the position of staff attorney for an agency focused on ending domestic violence. We at the Sandra Rosenbaum School of Social Work are extremely proud of each of you. Congratulations, Taylor, Kelsey, Isabel, Lydia, Lindsay, and Raquel on achieving one of your major life goals. I put my hand on my heart to send my joy to you and your family members on this day of your significant accomplishment. Welcome to the social work profession. Do your best for the benefit of all. Our next speaker is Alice Egan, instructor for the Public and Private Child Welfare Field Unit. Hello, is my sound working? I hope it is. Awesome. Well, hi, graduates and their family and friends. I am here today to talk a bit about the social work practice in public and private child welfare field units. In this field unit, students gain experience working across systems and in a variety of settings with the aim of promoting child and family well-being. Students learned critical skills in child welfare practice with an emphasis on ethics and boundaries, trauma-informed work, and cultural relevance and humility. Like other fields this year, the important work of child welfare has required an extreme amount of flexibility and creativity. Field placements this year in the child welfare unit included agency settings like child protective services, foster care and adoption, youth and restorative justice programs, community center settings, family service and advocacy organizations, and early intervention and prevention programs. The wide range of field placement settings in this unit, along with the range of educational levels from BSW to advanced practice MSW students, created a really vibrant seminar environment where students learned from and supported each other. Most of our students in this unit go on to work in the field of child welfare and pursue positions in direct practice, in supervision, policy development, and implementation. Graduates in the unit, Myra, Kira, Ellen, Emily, Leanne, Emery, Isabel, and Julianne, I am so proud of all of you for your hard work and your perseverance this year. Each one of you has so many gifts to share, and I have full confidence that you'll go on to make tremendous contributions in your social work careers. Congratulations to all of you. Now, speaking of my amazing students, I get to introduce our next student speaker, Emery rankin Utevsky. Thank you, Alice. And you can't make me cry and then have me speak. <laughs> and thanks everyone else for joining us today to celebrate. I am excited to share with you some of the important lessons I have learned in the field of social work. So social work is a values-based profession. And I don't know about all of my classmates here, but my undergraduate institution made me memorize them. Service, social justice, dignity and worth of the person, importance of human relationships, integrity and competence. And these values apply not just to our professional careers, but to life. So I want to look at how they and their accompanying concepts, empathy and sustainability can carry us through the world. So one of our core values is the importance of relationships. We know that humans are social creatures. We actually have to take an entire class called human behavior in the social environment. And so we, of all people, should know that we have to prioritize our relationships whether those are with parents, partners, family, friends, or colleagues, relationship building 
is a central life task for all people, and it's not only okay, but necessary to dedicate time to it. Second, we are fortunate as social workers to have had official training on how to demonstrate empathy. We know how to reflect and validate someone's feelings without giving advice or trying to fix or change them. And that is a valuable life skill that too many in our world lack. So let's use it. Let's teach it to others because the ability to be there with people who are struggling wherever they are is a superpower. We are lucky too that our program has placed such an emphasis on self-care and sustainability. We have to know that taking care of ourselves is beneficial across the board because we're no good to anyone if we're burned out, fatigued, worried, or exhausted. So taking breaks every now and then is required. And as we move on, I challenge each of us to create a sustainable life post-grad. Sustainability looks different for everyone. So that might mean washing your sheets more regularly or refusing to work overtime at your new job. It might mean a weekly date night with your partner, preventative medical care, or budgeting for a Netflix subscription. Knowing that whatever we need to be our most effective selves is worth it. And part of that is the ability to recognize your limits and set boundaries. It's okay to say no. I'll say it again, because it's definitely taking me at least 25 years to really learn that. It's okay to say no. As much as we might push ourselves to do everything and be everything, having and asserting boundaries is a human right. And as we move into life beyond college, I think we could all use a reminder that it's better to do one thing well than many things poorly. Make your choices and commit to them. Set your limits and honor them. Pardon my language, but as the iconic Ron Swanson says in Parks and Recreation, Never half-ass two things, whole-ass one thing. And finally, I would be remiss if I neglected to mention activism. We have been fortunate to be in a community with people who want to make change and a profession that values social justice. There's a Jewish concept, tikkun olam, which means repair the world. And there's a Rabbi Tarfan quote about that concept that says, you are not obligated to finish the work, but neither are you free to abandon it. We have an ethical duty as social workers and a moral duty as good human beings to seek justice, repair harm, and build the world in which we want to live. So this year has been anything but typical. And we'll take what we learned and leave what we didn't like. Like Michonne said, I don't like to tell people how they should feel, but I hope we all feel proud that we earned our degrees in the middle of an actual global pandemic. And I want to leave you with wisdom from my mentor, Dr. Rebecca Richards, a mantra that's gotten me through just about everything. You are good. You are whole. You have everything you need inside of you. Thank you. And I'm excited to welcome our next speakers, Mercy Greenwald and Kelsey Siegel, instructors for the Community Mental Health Field Unit. Hi there. We are Mercy Greenwald and Kelsey Siegel, co-instructors for the Community Mental Health Agency's field unit. Students in this field unit are placed at agencies such as Chrysalis, NAMI, Community Support Programs, the Gender and Sexuality Campus Center, and other community centers. Students work with consumers of all age ranges from children to adults. This generalist year fields unit focuses on building relationships, learning systems of care, and understanding how to truly engage with others through a reflection of what we bring to the work. We work to emphasize on building anti-racist practices, person and environment perspective, and engaging in social justice work on the micro, meso, and macro levels. So we took over this field unit about two years ago. So our first group of MSWs are graduating today. Yay! And our second group of VSWs are also graduating today. Double yay! We're holding a special place in our heart for both of these groups as they have ventured into our first years of teaching with us in the midst of a pandemic. We're so impressed by their flexibility, their constant ability to pivot and make changes, and their willingness to continue to glean as much learning as they could through it all. We know that the skills that they have developed will lead them to be change makers in the field of social work. And we also just want to like give another small caveat to say that 
um, all of our students were amazing and resilient and exceptional in every way. And we would be remiss if we didn't also honor the fact that specifically for our BIPOC students, the amount of work and diligence they had to execute in order to just maintain their own safety and like basic humanity was even more pressured this year, right? And so we just wanna also like give a specific sort of understanding and respect to the fact that like, for everyone this past year was exceptionally difficult and challenging, but for our BIPOC students to ensure their safety was even more difficult. And so that being said, we just wanna say congratulations to everybody. We love y'all, we're so proud of y'all. Y'all should be so proud of yourselves. You're amazing, exceptional people and humans, and you're gonna do so much amazing work. And with that, we would love to transition to Meg Burby, who is one of the instructors for the Juvenile and Criminal Justice Field Unit. Thank you. So hello, graduates. I'm so pleased to be a part of your celebration. Today, I'm speaking for myself and also for Hadil. Although Hadil is not on camera with me, I'm happy to pass along her heartfelt congratulations. Both of us have thoroughly enjoyed supporting your academic and professional goals while working as your field instructors. The social work practice in juvenile and criminal justice field unit provides students with an opportunity to gain experience as a social change agent within the justice system. Students apply social work values and ethics to a range of programs that serve both youth and adults. Students study the justice system from policing to the impact of crime on both um, survivors or victims. It's no small task. Aspects of offending, risk assessment, reform interventions, policy and program development have all been areas of study throughout this academic year. As a field unit, students have been working hard while gaining experiences with a range of community partners, both in the community and in secured institutional settings. Such programs range from early identification and diversion efforts to post-incarceration and community reintegration to civil commitment treatment programming. These internships include opportunities for both micro-level direct contact with clients, virtually this year when in-person was not feasible, and macro-level practice with program analysis and development. Examples of internship sites that students have participated in over the last year include Operation Fresh Start, several Just Dane programs, Sandridge Secure Treatment Center, Project Respect, and the Federal Defender's Office. Graduates, congratulations. Celebrate this accomplishment. The work you've done is incredibly meaningful. You've positively impacted the lives of some of our community's most disadvantaged and stigmatized individuals. We need more people like you, compassionate, brilliant, innovative, steadfast social workers who are unwilling to toss aside others who we have deemed often unworthy. I'm so happy for you as you celebrate your graduation. Know that Hadil and I have enjoyed our time with you very much and we're only a text away. Now, Michael Hoffmeister is our next speaker. Michael is the instructor for the Public Child Welfare Field Unit. Thank you, Meg, and good morning, everyone. Uh, the, school of, uh, the, the social work practice in public child welfare field unit provides students with focus placements and training related to work in child protective services. All of the students in this field unit are participants in the Title IV -E child welfare training program, which provides students with specialized training in the child welfare system to prepare them for future employment in the child welfare field. Students perform their field work in various public agencies in Dane and surrounding counties. Many students completed field work in placements that require direct practice child welfare services with children and families at county departments of human services. These students worked in ongoing child protective services, youth justice and kinship care in Dane County, foster care in Greene County, and initial assessment in Dane, Jefferson and Rock counties. Other students completed fieldwork that supported planning, development, and implementation of programs and policies for the statewide child welfare system. These students were placed at the Wisconsin Department of Children and Families and worked on teams that support prevention services, child safety, adoption, and permanency services throughout the state. While students faced varying challenges this year, each of them took the challenges on head first and were able to thrive in their work. Each of these students have proven that they have the tenacity, the passion, and the voice to make a real difference in this world. 
Congratulations to all of you on this hard earned and well-deserved achievement. I'm so proud of each of you and cannot wait to see what your futures hold. Now I have the distinct pleasure to introduce our final student speaker. Please welcome Michaela Liebeck. Thank you, Michael, and good morning, everyone. First, some congratulations are in order, not just for the graduates for accomplishing this major milestone, but to everyone who has made it through the far ceremony this far. The School of Social Work is well known for its lengthy lectures, so of course, we had to put everyone to the test just one more time, and I promise we are this close to the end. But in all seriousness, when thinking about the final message I would like to leave you with today, I found myself reflecting on why I applied to the social work program to begin with. In the written portion of my application, I wrote, I no longer aspire to just help others. Instead, I aspire to create change for the well-being of others, and I believe that pursuing a career in social work will allow me to do just that. Now, many of us have been drawn to this program for a wide variety of reasons. And however, I do believe that no matter what distinction you have chosen within this program, the School of Social Work has provided us with the educational background in both areas that need change and avenues that you can take to create that change if you choose to. However, I remind you today that while being in this program has set us up to be change agents in the world, simply identifying as a social worker, having a degree in social work, or working in a social work position does not make you a change agent unless you commit to being an agent of change yourself every single day. Therefore, wherever life takes you after today, whether that be in the field of social work or not, I encourage you to continue to analyze the systems and organizations that you are operating within. I encourage you to question the status quo of the work that you are doing in your agencies or outside of them. And I encourage you to speak up and take the action necessary to jumpstart the changes that you believe will positively impact others. Being a change agent is not an easy task. However, the work of a change agent can create ease in the lives of others. Being a change agent is not always comfortable, but it is within that lack of comfortability where growth can emerge. And being a change agent may not come with automatic gratification. However, the continuous action, and with that continuous action, the seeds of change that you plant may develop and prosper with time and energy. Remember, not everyone is operating under those same lenses in which you see the world. Therefore, when given the opportunity or when an opportunity pre presents itself, do not shy away from sharing your perspective that you've gathered to give insight, to expand a conversation, or to carry out the change that you seek. And lastly, while you may feel the need to follow the suit of the agency policy or programming, especially as a new graduate or a new worker, remember that you have a lot to offer the places that you are going as you bring a new lens to the table and a fresh pair of eyes to analyze whether the intent and the impact of a program are in alignment. At the end of the day, you get to choose whether you are open and willing to allow social change to manifest itself through you. However, this cannot be done by being a bystander within the systems of, that society operates under. Now more than ever, it is time for change, growth, and action. Thank you. At this point, I would like to turn things back over to Christy Slack for a few closing words. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hello everyone. Um, so I'm actually not gonna say my closing words just yet because no formal virtual program would be complete without a few technical glitches that we had earlier. So we're going to bring back on a couple of last speakers before I say my uh, closing remarks, um, including one of our student speakers, Sammy Smith. But first, I'm going to turn things over um, to Katie larson Claude, who is the field instructor for our educational field, um, educational settings field unit. Thanks, Christy, and congratulations, Michaela. School social workers work in schools at the elementary, middle, and high school level. This group was placed in various districts, including Madison, Sun Prairie, Middleton, Wanakee, and Verona. Our work as school social workers is to reduce barriers so that students can access their education. This work includes equitable practice, working with families, individual student work, 
helping access mental health services, group work, supporting classrooms, attendance interventions, access to special education, and helping to train staff. This has been an exceptional year. This group has excelled at patience, flexibility, adaptability, and ingenuity. They are experts at virtual work and transitioning to in-person learning. Some examples of this creative process include stress and coping skills offered virtually, promoting virtual attendance and incentives, creating groups or clubs that include all students and honor all identities, such as Rainbow Club, the Black Joy Club, Latinx Club, Latin Student Union, Safe Space, virtual gaming and hanging, and social justice. They have promoted self-care and wellness, translated trauma group videos, even used at the national level, created suicide prevention videos, designed grief kits, and provided free bikes to students and families. Getting to work with this group has been one of the highlights of my year. This group inspires me, and it's been a true honor to work with them. Next, I have the honor of introducing Sammy Smith. Hi, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay, good, yay. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you um, and welcome my fellow graduates and friends. It's an honor to speak to all of you today. Uh, cap and gown, it's going down. Our future begins now. It's a beautiful thing when a passion and a career come together. I know I'm not the only one that turned can'ts into cans and dreams into plans, and I commend you all for that. We became social workers because other people's lives are worth our time. We aren't in this for the income. We are in it for the outcome. We'll make a living by what we get, but we'll make a life by what we give. As we head out into the world, we must remember to always choose progress over perfection. We must see ourselves as going far, even when we feel like we've fallen and resurrected. Who knows, maybe one of us will run for an election. We know why we're here, so let's get out there, shout it loud and clear. Have pride in who you've become and show no fear. There were times when we hated it or even berated it. There were times where there was elatedness, gratefulness, and patience times when we wanted to yell out, I can't take this, times when we thought, this is the greatest. It doesn't matter how we got here. What matters is we made it. The tassel was worth the hassle. <laughs> uh, I tried to do that, didn't work. Uh, we, we came, we saw, and we mastered. Thank you all and congratulations, graduates of 2021. And right now I will transition over to Kristen Slack again. Thank you, Sammy. And thank you to all of our student speakers, Michaela, Emery, Bobby, Michonne, um, and to our uh, other professors and field instructors who spoke um, really amazing speeches. I love the, we're not in it for the income, we're in it for the outcome. I'm gonna remember that always, Sammy. Um, I must conclude by extending a huge thank you uh, to the partners, parents, grandparents, children, and other family and friends of our graduates who have supported them and are celebrating them today. The support you have provided has been extra important this, this past year. Please know that my colleagues and I here at the school appreciate all you have done to be there uh, for our students and to get them to this point. I also want to thank um, our staff that worked very hard to put together this event, um, Gerald Eggleston, Aaron Rush, uh, Steph Van Pei, um, and many others that, that contributed to the planning that went into this. Thank you for all of your efforts. This concludes our program, but it is by no means the end of your celebrations, I'm sure. Please enjoy the rest of the day and congratulations to all.